Hello and welcome to Chalk Talk. My name is Charlie Stokes and I'm a technical marketing engineer for Cisco Systems. Today I'm going to talk to you about a, a design we call the Resilient Plus NGFW design. If you've watched any of the other videos, we've, we've spoken about a design we call the Resilient design. And this one's very similar with one key difference. So I'm going to put in, we, the design starts with a pair of active standby ASAs. In this case, I'm going to draw them in two different colors. This is the standby device. And this is the active device. Each one connects out to a switch or switching environment, probably dual connected to a pair of switches up above. Uh, that point is fairly standard. Uh, hanging behind each ASA, I'm going to focus on the active deployment here first, is again a pair of FTD devices, but it, unlike the resilient design, which had one FTD device directly connected to an ASA, this, dev this design uses a cluster of FTD devices. And in this particular case, each cluster or each member of the cluster is connected to both ASAs. And we have a port channel. And then hanging off behind each ASA is also, or I'm sorry, each FTD is also connected into the switching environment behind the scenes or behind the deployment. And so packets would move through uh, the switch, go through the primary ASA, through the port channel uh, to a cluster of FTD, which again need their own CCL connections off to a separate, you know, switching environment. Uh, probably dual connected in, just like normal, and uh, back to the switch, and then off to the inside. For the standby path, I'm going to again draw it in a different color. So the standby path again dual connects the ASA to both FTDs and brings a separate pair of interfaces off to the switching environment as well. So the, on NFTD, because these devices are interface paired, we would pair up the port channel on, on FTD that includes these two interfaces. And then we would also create a different port channel that includes these two interfaces. So in effect, this is one interface pair, this is a second interface pair. So now, no matter which uh, no matter how packets enter the switching environment, they, they're headed for the active ASA. They would traverse both FTDs potentially, although a flow would only traverse one FTD. And so in this, in this design, one of the primary benefits of Resilient Plus over a design like Resilient is the fact that because the FTDs are clustered, we now share state between them. So any failure in this design is fully stateful and allows packets to flow with no, with no need to restart uh, any flow. Now let's talk about the logical packet flow. In the Resilient Plus design, packets are going to move again fairly standard. We have an outside world. Packets are going to come in to your ASA. And again, ASA is in multi-context mode. So we've got two contexts here, context one and context two. Packets are going to move through, let's say in this particular case, again, this could be routed or it could be, uh, the ASA could be deployed in routed mode or it could be deployed in transparent mode. In this case, again, we're using a routed mode. So uh, packets would move through context one and uh, they may exit ASA on, let's say again, VLAN 920 and they'll enter firepower threat defense. And in this case, again, we're using um, interface pairing mode. So packets that enter on VLAN 920 get exit the box on VLAN 920 and we can apply all of our policy in firepower threat defense to VLAN 920 packets. We can tag uh, the policy specific to VLAN 920 and traffic that enters on this trunk port on a coming out of uh, context two might be on VLAN 925. And again, it would exit the box on VLAN 925. And again, we can build our own sp policy specific to VLAN 925. And again, the, because FTD is clustered, this would, you know, all traffic leaving the active ASA would go through one or more uh, of these FTD devices, all configured the same using interface pairing mode. Uh, 
trunking as many VLANs as, as are exiting the ASA. If we've got more context, we would have more VLANs. If we have different interfaces, uh, like a DMZ interface, we would again attach a different uh, VLAN on ASA and we could exit traffic and apply again differentiated policy per VLAN. And because in FTD, the, their, their interface paired, the, uh, the traffic is guaranteed that if it enters on 920, it'll exit on 920 or vice versa, depending on which way it's coming through the box. And so this gives us a very similar uh, logical packet flow to the resilient design. Uh, the primary difference being it's in Resilient Plus, FTD is clustered, and uh, this gives us the added benefit of a fully stateful, fully resilient design uh, that, that's fault tolerant and doesn't require any uh, flow restart uh, in the event of a failure. So this concludes the Resilient Plus design, and thank you for your time.